Hi everybody. I thought it might be quite useful and uh, interesting to look at some cases of um, secretory carcinoma of the skin. I used to have a, a couple of cases, but unfortunately I've lost the, the images. So I, I, I'm joined in this talk by doctors uh, Grishikoff, a reader, and Hernain, who very kindly shared cases with me. It's, it's, uh, it's exceedingly rare. Um, I think, I think 25, 26 cases have been documented, and that's about it. And the tumour presents as a, as a fairly well circumscribed, uh, well delineated nodule or mass uh, that's usually painless uh, and in fact is asymp it's asymptomatic. Now in the literature most cases have arisen in the axilla and the head and neck but there are documented case reports occurring elsewhere and as you can see from the image on the right which is courtesy of Louis, Louis Requina and Uma Sangueza uh, you may even see it on the sole of the foot. It was it was thought until fairly recently that it was a basically a benign or if you like low low grade carcinoma, but there has been a, a single case report of a fairly typical example where the patient developed lymph nodes and lung metastases. So it's not something to take entirely lightly. Um, as I mentioned, axilla and face are the commonest sites, and the tumour show varying features. They're, they're often sharply circumscribed, and they show a variety of patterns, including, as I've mentioned, microcystic tubular, papillary, and solid patterns. And the, the uh, diagnostic features, the cytoplasm is, is very, very bubbly. Uh, it's eosinophilic and the uh, material shows striking diastase PAS positivity uh, in the luminal content. Now, I do think it's important to stress that uh, although one sees it in the skin, one needs to be careful that one's not mistaking a breast or salivary gland primary uh, presenting in the skin because that's a whole different world. So it's really a diagnosis of exclusion. And uh, it, uh, similar to breast tumors, the majority of um, cutaneous secretory carcinomas show the T1215 fusion gene, and um, that's present in 75% of cases. So there are um, some uh, useful immunohistochemistry markers if, if you have any doubt about the diagnosis. As I mentioned, the first thing is to make sure it's not uh, arising in the axilla, for example, it's not arising in the axillary tail. So you, may, you must be absolutely sure it is uh, uh, arising in an apocrine gland at that site. The tumors express, as you'd expect, CK7, mamma globulin, uh, globin rather, S100, SOX10, STAT5A, and so on. And often, but not invariably, they, they're labelled with P63 and calponin. And those patients who show the translocation, the tumours as tumour cells are NT, N, NTRK3 positive. And on the right, there's a, a nice example showing focal mama globin one labeling. Um, I got this table, which is quite useful. It's well, it's not totally up to date, but it's nearly up to date. In 2017, uh, doctors Moore and Kuda presented uh, some cases. 
and um, one one can see that uh, uh, the with respect to the ETA V6 rearrangement, most tumors are positive, and this works out at about seventy five percent. And uh, at that time, two thousand and seventeen. Uh, in in cases where there was reasonable follow up, there was no evidence of recurrence or uh, uh, systemic spread. But as I mentioned, we now have a case with met metastatic disease. So this is one that uh, Victor Grishakov from Moscow City Oncology Hospital shared with us. And it's an absolutely beautiful tumor. And I, I think it's just, it's probably a perfect textbook example. Um, you can see it, it occupying the dermis is a very distinct round. It's almost, uh, almost. Well, I suppose you could even say it's pseudo encapsulated, but at the bottom, it merges with a more infiltrative growth pattern extending down to and actually involving subcutaneous fat. And there's a close-up view there to show the, the, the in magnificent granular uh, uh, material lying within the lumina of all of these uh, uh, lumina. Uh, in some places you can make out clearly that it's a a ductal structure and that's a, a very diagnostic picture and there's a close-up view i i think this is, this is one of the most beautiful tumors one actually encounters it's just really really gorgeous there's another view there and this is the deep part which is quite interesting because um the deep part has has a more cribriform pattern and uh, on its own um, you might wonder about cribriform carcinoma it, it's sort of similar to cribriform carcinoma but then when you look at the rest of the tumor as we see there then it's clearly not and uh, it is indeed a secretory carcinoma and at very high power one can see the in this case in the cribriform part there's a well defined myoepithelial cell layer and here's the immunohistochemistry from that case s100 positive gata3 positive p63 positive and in this case there was some expression of cd117 or c kit which as you see is is highlighted in red and that's ck7 now um dr muammar a reader shared this case with me and it's another just another beautiful textbook um secretory carcinoma which arose on the forehead and here's the immuno it is isn't that really pretty cea and EMA, CK7, uh, and perfect P63 showing you the myoepithelial layer. And this is one that uh, Paolo Hernan shared with, with us. Uh, and this uh, was one that arose in the axilla. And this is the site where you have to make sure in particular that you're not dealing with a breast tumor or a tumor arising in the auxiliary tail of the breast. And I interpreted that area there where the arrow was as probably an in situ component, which would mean that uh, this would be convincingly uh, 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 arising in the apocrine gland rather than, the, rather than the breast. But elsewhere it showed very typical features. And then lastly, differential diagnosis. Uh, it's worth noting that metastatic thyroid carcinoma can look a bit similar on occasion, so you might want to consider that in the differential diagnosis. 
People mention adenoid cystic, but I don't think that's really much of a differential diagnosis. We did see that field where cribriform carcinoma could be a differential. And um, sometimes apocrine carcinoma are, you know, are, are really good going malignant a uh, malignant apocrine tumor may show uh, secretions uh, overlapping, if you like, with secretory carcinoma. But by and large, I, I, I think if you've seen one, you'll recognize it very easily. So I hope that's been of some interest to you. And um, please, please make, uh, make comments or... or um, uh, ask any questions that you might like to. Thank you very much.